Contact Harvest. I don't know where to start, to be honest. So I was expecting a lot from this book because it follows, of course, one of fans' favorite uh, characters, uh, Sergeant Johnson. The thing is, it was pretty disappointing for me personally. Let me explain why. So the story begins pretty promising. You know, you get some information about um, the interaction interactionists. Damn, that word. So the insurrectionists. Yes, so a group of people that turned uh, against the uh, UNSC and you get a bit of information how they, how they operate and how they act uh, and how they terrorize cities. <laughs> and Johnson is part of a squad to, um, to try and stop them. So you get a bit of information about that group, about Johnson, a bit of uh, Johnson's squad mates. Eventually they get to a moment where there's like a hostage situation and Johnson is not able to take a shot um, that he should have taken to save a lot of people. The hostage situation escalates and a lot of people die and get injured. And you know, at that point I'm like, holy shit, if this is gonna be the book, cause you know, they talk about the insurrection in the, on the back of the book itself. So I was like, okay, it's gonna be Johnson and against that group. Well, not exactly. It's only actually the beginning of the book that talks about the insurrection. And then it pretty much, for me, goes downhill from there. But you actually get like a, a quiet, emotional moment where Johnson, I think, finds his aunt. I think. Um, he was going to visit her, but she... It was actually pretty creepy to read, so her whole room was like very cold and frozen. And, well, she died, but to keep her, you know fresh they froze the room um, and you know seeing that through Johnson's eyes was pretty was pretty emotional I uh, I gotta give him that but um, after all that shit happened he gets transferred to harvest to train some yeah and I'm reading this from the back some inexperienced colonial militia trainees yes the thing is between stories with Johnson you have a lot of and that's where the book starts to lose me you have a lot of other stories, so you have a story about AIs talking to each other on Harvest. I had no clue most of the time. I couldn't follow that story at all about the AIs talking. There was like one point I started reading and I was like, what the hell is going on? So I went back, like I went a chapter back and I re read it again and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I don't know why, but the AI stories in this book are pretty weird to me. And the thing that was bothering me the most about Johnson is like in other books, when Johnson appears, I read his lines in his voice. And in this book, I didn't have that. Like, it was almost not Johnson they were talking about, because, you know, normally in the games and in the other books, Johnson is somebody, of course he's tough, but he also brings some humor and some, some lightness to the story. And that wasn't the case in this book, in my opinion, of course. Um, and that's a bit of a shame. So he eventually meets up with his trainees, and you have another group of trainees, and that group will be trained by his squad member. He all that almost lost his life in that interactionist's uh, incident. So he was pretty mad at Johnson, and we get a we get a, a bit of a fight scene, but that died down pretty quickly. While all that is happening, you also have a covenant ship with um, jackals, I think, searching for holy relics, but you know, to keep for themselves, not to give it to the to the Covenant. And that's where the book confused me again. Like, it was all written so weird. Like, the pacing was weird sometimes. So, sometimes it moves so slowly, and all of a sudden you're with Johnson in this, in this Covenant ship fighting them, and the ship blows up and Johnson is knocked out and stuff like that. I'm like, wait, I just spent 50 pages reading calmly, like, like you know, a normal pace. And then, boom, all of a sudden, Everything explodes. That's the thing that bothers me as well. Always in this book, when the action starts building up, in the other books, it likes, it gets a finale, you know? It gets the moment where they're like, wow, damn. But in this book, when it builds up, it falls off immediately. I had that like four or five times where I'm like, oh, you missed a chance to have an epic fight or an epic moment and it just dies down. And you may notice like, I'm not talking a lot about, about characters. I never really did in the other books as well, but there's so many forgettable characters, in my opinion. Like, I read a lot about characters. Some die, some live, but I'm like, eh, I don't... 
I don't feel a connection with them. There's like one trainee I'm very interested about, that, that's Jenkins, I think was his name. Um, he has a pretty interesting character, but it, it never develops to a point where you're like, oh, I want to read more about him, you know? But okay, while all that is going on, you also read about a grunt um, who escaped from that Covenant ship, and he eventually gets picked up by another Covenant ship, but you know, those are brutes, so it all works a bit different than with normal, normal Covenant. They go to Harvest, and you know, there was a peaceful beginning, so you know, Johnson and all of his squad mates are waiting on the brutes to land on Harvest, you know, to, to see... Of course, because this is all before Covenant War, so they didn't know what was going on, so... They tried to communicate with them, it didn't go that well, so war breaks out. The brutes are just searching for oracles, you know, um, but the people on Harvest try to welcome them, maybe communicate with them, but that didn't work at all. And here's another moment where it dies down again, so from the moment the war starts, you're like, okay, shit's about to go down now. The next chapter you read again about the war and Johnson, it's like, oh, three days later and we're here now, you know? You don't get that transition from the war starting and all the stuff that happens right after it, that would be cool to read. No, they skip like a few days and, you know, they're glassing the, the planet already and, and stuff like that, so I'm like, I want to read about how we got to this point. I don't want to read about the start and then three days later. No, I want to read everything, you know? So that's a bit of a missed chance, in my opinion. But, you know, I understand as well you need to keep the book short. But then I'm thinking, like, keep some stuff out of it. Like, you read a lot about the Prophet of Truth as well, which is in itself pretty interesting. But that story moves so slow, in my opinion. There's so much unnecessary dialogue. I was not invested in it. I don't know, I, I read a lot online that this is a great book and everybody and in my comments they're like, oh yeah, this is great. So I'm sorry that I'm not like seeing the same as you. Maybe, it, maybe it's probably me. Like it's going over my head probably, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of these stories, like maybe the grunt story is pretty interesting. It's always fun to, to go into a head of a grunt because you know, there's at the surface they, they look pretty dumb, but you know, it's still interesting to, to see them develop a bit. There was one really cool action scene where Johnson is getting attacked by by some brutes, um, you get like a chase scene in the streets of uh, I can't remember the city on Harvest. Um, that was that was pretty cool to read, and there was a bit of action, and it was the first time there was like real tension, and you're like, oh shit, is he about to die or not? Of course, you you know he's not gonna die, but still, that was pretty brief. So I was like, okay, well, that's over, that's sad, and then you get to the escape of uh, Harvest. Again, it felt a bit like I'm missing something. Like, I'm missing some action or I'm missing some tension and, and again, when I was feeling like, oh, it started building up again. The escape ends with Johnson saying, we'll make it too. You know, and I'm like, yeah, but I wanna see how you make it, you know? <laughs> but of course, they, they, they make it out safe and pretty weird, the book ends with a sex scene of Johnson and Jilan, Jilan, I don't know how to pronounce it. That felt, that felt a bit misplaced because throughout the book they don't really have some chemistry in my opinion and then you have like the sensual scene and the book ends there I'm like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yesterday when I finished I was sitting here like I was like why? Why did that happen? Why did the book end with that? So overall in my opinion it's, it's the weakest Halo novel I've read um, from all the novels I've read already. That doesn't mean it's a bad book. It's just, I, I, I think not a book for me. I think other people will enjoy it a lot, but you know, this slower pace and a lot of in-depth details and with, especially with the AIs talking to each other, I was so disconnected from it. But I, I can really see the appeal in this, but it's not for me, I think. And I know, you know, this review is me just sitting down without, you know, writing anything down. It's just me sitting down and talking and I'm not talking about any characters or names or... Because I think Johnston is really the focus and that's what I was hoping the book would focus on most. And Byron? Is that how you pronounce it? Like, yeah, I read them in my head, my, but Byron was a cool character as well. It was pretty badass and... and but it, it doesn't feel fleshed out enough to be very interested in those characters. But like I said, maybe I got it, maybe I got it wrong, maybe it went over my head. Um, but yeah, this this took a bit longer than I was expecting to read, because I, I had to stop a lot or reread a lot. Um, but overall, I'm not 
I'm not pleased, especially not with the ending. Um, there are some good moments in this, and there's a lot of information in here you wouldn't get from from the games or whatnot. But it's pretty cool to see this this really the, the start of the Covenant War in this. But further than that, no, I don't know. I it's not just it's not really for me. But there were still enjoyable moments in this book. I don't want this to be like a bad review. Um, it's just in my opinion not a great book. But you know, this is still going on my shelf as a proud thing I own because it's still a Halo book, you know? But you know, it can always be good. And maybe the next book, The Cold Protocol, will be better. So stay tuned for a review on this. This is a pretty, pretty big book. Let me see. Yeah, 400 pages as well. Um, so I'm gonna start in this. I'm excited. I'm going in here with a fresh mind and I'm excited. So I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know your opinions down in the comments, of course. If I missed some things or I didn't understand obvious things, you can always let me know. And if you're like, hey, why didn't you talk about this, this or this? You know, you can let me know as well. I thank you for staying this long in this video. Like, subscribe as always. Don't forget to check out the Discord. Links will be in the description. And I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.